something. Hello. We could barely hear you. But do you think the game monitor needs to go down a little? Talk yeah, a it sounds like it needs just slightly. That's good. Something. It's, hello. Some, hello. Something. Mic check. One, two, one, two. Sounds like you might need to go up a little bit. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Are you okay, sitting to the right of the TV. Yeah, I got it. I guess it's fine. Ugh. Showing sure that yet. <laughs> <laughs> Secret base two. All righty then. So it's just gonna be Sonic alone. Mm -hmm. No tails. All right. Three, two, one, go. This is Sonic Advance, and in previous GDQs we saw um, a run with Tails and a run with Amy, and now we're running Sonic, who's pretty different from the other two characters. Like Tails and Knuckles, he can spin dash, but and he also has this Insta Shield from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. So the most interesting thing that they introduced in this game for Sonic is this Air Dash, which Combo's been doing right as much as possible here. So air dashing is really important for Sonic because it gives you a bunch of a lot of extra horizontal speed and makes you start to descend, and you gain speed when you're descending and you lose speed when you're ascending. So you want to be air dashing on flat surfaces or when you're going downhill as much as you can to be gaining speed. So, so that was Act One, Sub Thirty. So right here, you see Combo Blaze doing a somersault attack with Sonic. Um, normally, you're supposed to, there's like three parts to this attack, where he spins, then does a flip, then slides. But he's only doing the first two parts, because the first, the first two parts brings you to complete stop. In those bushes was an invisible spring that Combo Blaze just air dashed over. And he got the perfect air dash to get the maximum speed, which is perfect. And... Perfect fight. Oh, oh never mind. Almost. That hammer hitbox is a lot bigger than it looks sometimes. Mm, the first word jumps for that strat is really tight. But still, still a good time. Perfect capsule landing. I don't think I could hear you. Can I hear you? I could barely hear Burden or yeah. anybody else. You probably don't need to hear me. <laughs> So right here at the start of this level, you're supposed to write down a few pulleys, but Combos is going to skip the second pulley and use the air dash to land safely on the bottom. So it's also important to air dash right after spin dashing because whenever you're in ball mode in this game, like in the other 2D Sonic games, you, you always decelerate when you're rolling, unless you're going downhill. And you're accelerating when you're not in ball mode. So right after you spin dash, you use an air dash to um, maintain your speed, but also be able to accelerate because you're no longer in ball mode. So that was a good time. Yeah, that was, that was really solid. Clean. So back there, you saw for a second there was a giant claw that the combo kind of just jumped straight over him, did not care about. There's a lot of those throughout uh, the next stage. And uh, one of them in particular, I don't know if it's bad for Sonic, but it's uh, really, really bad for some of the other characters that dodge sometimes. Combo Blaze waited a few seconds at the start because he's waiting for the platform cycles at the very start. We typically go by in-game time for this game and by adding up the level times. So in some stages, we wait at the start intentionally when the in-game timer is not going to wait for specific cycles. So right here, Combo Blaze got his first speed shoes of the run. And speed shoes are really useful in this game. They're really OP, and they give you a lot of speed, and you accelerate really quickly, especially in the air. So he's going to skip a pulley here. Got it. Nice. That jumps a lot tighter than it looks. Yeah, you got to keep your speed shoes up to that part to make the jump. Mm. Otherwise, Sonic cannot skip it.
So you want to hit this boss four times before he jumps a second time. Then that triggers him to do a giant jump. And then you get hit on purpose, so you can hit him four times quickly again while during invincibility frames. That was a really good level. Yep. Right, this third zone coming up is called Casino Paradise, and it has a lot of annoying moving objects that you can lose a lot of time if you make a small mistake. So. I think everybody that's played this game has spent so long trying to IL it to get a good time, and it's, it's just terrible. It makes you so sad. He's gonna go back for a speed use here. Those leathers right there, man. I don't like them. Especially with tails. Since the cycles are off from what Combo's used to, he's taking a different route. Uh, and this is what I mean. So all the cycles for this stage are uh, global. So I'm going for it. I'm oh. just gonna go for it. So he's trying to go for a frame perfect jump. Right there, there we go. Nice. Yeah, there's, I didn't lose too much time because of this. You saved like three or four seconds doing that, I think. But it looks really cool anyway, so <laughs> might as well go for it. It's a marathon, man. Just go for it. <laughs> so you can do that clip with any character besides Amy because she cannot spin dash. So the boss coming up for the stage has a lot of luck to it. And it's really obnoxious. The idea behind the boss coming up is that there are sep there are like around eight pipes or something he can come out of, and there's also a giant spike ball that can come out randomly. So you have to um, react accordingly and try to hit him as many times as possible. Sometimes he can give you patterns that you just cannot hit him multiple times in. So he's standing on the lip here, so he can reach the middle platform immediately if he has to. Like that. Three hits. That was Three nice. hits is good. Yeah. Uh, should be a two hit. Nice. nice. That was really good. So every, most, every boss in this game takes eight hits to kill. Or every main boss in this game takes eight, eight hits to kill. Yeah, the, there's only one boss that takes a, a couple few, but he has two stage, sta uh, stages of it, and he's coming up next, actually. Oh, no, wait, After two this, stages. Yeah. yeah, sorry. The combo's waiting here at the start because he's waiting for a platform cycle so that he can run across, right, an invincibility box right here. That platform, nice. except, yeah, nice backup. <laughs> Thanks to invincibility, he can run across the spikes while maintaining all speed. There isn't really any way to avoid this underwater section. We don't stay in it too long. And there's a really neat shortcut right here that skips pretty much the last part of the stage. So if you remember from last year, if you watched, uh, pretty much we just rode down as Amy, but with Sonic, you can actually just jump right past it and not care. level has a few tight jumps. That one right there. If you don't, if you're too late on that jump, you're gonna hit the spring and you'll have to take a bottom route, which is really slow. Uh, the bottom route, shame. And a jump he did there before he came to a complete stop is a really tight jump to make as well. So those ping penguins are never really nice on this level. The way they throw the snowball is actually dependent on uh, how they see you. And sometimes it can come straight at you, which is what you always want, because you just jump over it and kill them. Sending it backwards is not the best thing in the world. And this is why we wanted the Tails incentive to be met, because if you have Tails as your partner, you can just send Tails up to hit this boss. But you don't have Tails, so we're going to have to deal with using these as platforms to reach the boss. Yeah, which is not... There's a lot of luck involved. Yeah. This is the pretty much arguably one of the hardest fights for Sonic in this game. It's amusing, because like all the other characters have such an easy time with this boss, especially Amy. But Sonic has the hardest time with this boss. Like, I would say casually, this is the one boss that probably makes people w uh, wish they didn't play Sonic in this game. <laughs> it's 
Especially this part. <laughs> A combo handled that, handled that really well, and he did not get that great of uh, icicles either. So that was a good fight considering the luck you got. Yeah, 119, 119 is fine. Ah, uh, this level. So pretty much every character, I, I believe every, every character, character can do yes. this. Mm -hmm. uh, you saw with Amy last uh, SGDQ, which uh, I think is the easiest one to do it with. It is the easiest one. Just because the hammer makes it a lot easier. Alright, so he, combo is kind of, the game thinks he's combo places in a different room layer now. He wants to land on his platform, skid off of it, and now he's walking into air. This lets him skip the entire stage. Now the height, the height that you land on is pretty much completely random due to sub pixels. So there's a pretty high chance that combo base is gonna line up with the spring that's in the way, but he's not. Whoa! He got the good one. We got the run. <laughs> if I could, if I touch that, I could like mess around, mess up the. The plane switch, whatever, and I just fall down to my death. That was really good. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> He's waiting here again for another platform cycle near the beginning of the stage. Most, all the other characters have a way to skip it. Sonic doesn't, but there's still a cool strat that Sonic can do. Ah. Gonna take damage. Up. Or not. Nice. There's a speed choose here he's gonna grab. Squeeze on some air dashes to go faster. So the air dashing is more difficult than it looks. Um, the general input for air dashing is to double tap a horizontal button. So it's the fact that he's doing them from the ground means that he's doing a really fast air dashes the moment he jumps. Which is similar to um, the Sonic Advance 2 run you, you might have seen before. So the bo upcoming boss is an interesting. You, you basically fight two fake Knuckles, a pink one and a blue one. So the pink Knuckles has three things he can do. He can either spin dash, which is best. He can stand there and do nothing, which is okay. And he can glide, which is the worst pattern. Um, the blue Knuckles has three patterns as well. He can spin dash or jump over you and glide, which is the second, which is the second best pattern. And the worst pattern is if he fires missiles, but that was still a really good fight. So. Yeah, that was solid. So this next level coming up is a pretty notorious level called Egg Rocket. It actually has a countdown timer, and I guess plot-wise, sort of, you're kind of supposed to climb up this rocket as it falls apart, so you have a time limit for every single part of the rocket you climb up. So there are three major parts to the rockets, and there's an entire under section you're supposed to go through here. But Combo Blaze is going to go for a skip right here. That's really tight. Oh, oh second oh, try. Yeah, it's going to fall down. I fuck go lie myself. You need to give yourself as much space as possible. If you jump on that slope, you do a slope jump and go down. Nice. And there we go, he got it. Sonic has the hardest time with that jump because he doesn't really have any forms of mobile of gaining heights. Whereas Tails can just fly there, Knuckles can climb up a wall, and Amy can just do a high jump. So that's the first part of the stage right there. So sadly enough, Sonic is actually the slowest at this level. Even Amy's faster than him because uh, pretty much every other character has a good, some type of good vertical mechanic with them, and Sonic just doesn't have that. And um, if you saw the t Tails race last year, I think, it was last year, um, between Talon and Fit Big Mike, they used a skip with Tails to skip this entire stage and save over a minute. Um, t only Tails can, and Knuckles can do, do that skip. Sonic can start it, but he has no way of gliding or flying, so he can't continue to skip. So he's gonna do a slope jump right here. Actually, no, I forgot, you're gonna get the speed shoes first. So a slope jump is a general term for um, when you jump, your jumping physics are affected by the incline you're on, you jump off of. So if you jump on flat ground, you jump as if you're normal. But if you jump on an upward incline, you jump really high, but not very far. And if you jump on a downward incline, you jump really low. 
which is good sometimes because it helps you gain speed. But sometimes doing an upward slope jump is useful as well because you get a lot of extra heights. So a lot of the, a lot of this game, along with other 2D Sonics, is about manipulating. Well, not manipulating, but knowing when to do slope jumps to get specific kinds of jumps that you're sort of not intended to get. So he's repeatedly doing air dashes right there because, as I mentioned before, when you air dash, you bring your vertical speed down to, to downward. And um, when you do it when landing on a platform, you land on it immediately because you don't really go up anymore and overshoot it. Conveniently enough, there's a speed choose right here. And there's going to be a jump he goes for here. Ah, oh, never mind. I forgot, I forgot how hectic the invincibility music is with speed shoes. Uh, oh. But that's a slope. That's a slope jump shortcut you can go for there. But this platforming section is kind of obnoxious to deal with. The platform cycles are pretty wide, and there's an enemy there that can snipe you. Okay. Just slope jump here to hit this fan here. Okay, cool, nice. So the second act of the zone is not called Egg Rocket 2, it's called a Cosmic Angel instead. And it also introduces, has the same gimmick of being able to go upside down. Most 2D Sonic games have some sort of gravity gimmick level. And Egg Rocket kind of had a, a gravity gimmick at one point. Cosmic Angel has a lot more of that. So there's a shortcut he's going to use by taking the bottom path here, where he goes upside down. So coming up at the end of the stage is probably the boss that a lot, casually a lot of people don't really like at all for every character. For good reason. Oh uh, yeah, it's, it's you'll see when it comes up. We'll, we'll start talking about it then. So the gimmick behind this boss is he, Eggman is kind of on a chain of links, and you need to flip him over by jumping from a high height and, you're, and landing near him. But you can't hit him repeatedly in quick succession. You have to wait a bit between each hit, or else he's not going to flip. You also have to make sure that you try to land closer to the middle, because that's where you can get more momentum in flipping him. And this game is actually surprisingly picky about where you need to land with Eggman. Uh, since he's constantly moving, sometimes you can just land next to him and it doesn't even register it. After a certain amount of hits, he starts moving faster. He's going to do it again here. Combo Blaze takes a hit intentionally to help get the last hit more quickly. That was a really solid fight. That was a good fight. Had to play safe. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this, the last stage is coming out called the X-Zone. This is pretty much a boss rush and a nostalgia trip to th through Sonic 1 and 2, because this has a boss fight from both of those games. This is the first boss of Sonic 1, and he takes 4 hits to kill. A quick kill, nice. And now he's going to face the second, the first boss of Sonic 2. Nice. Very nice. That's the fastest way you can kill him. And you can barely kill him off screen before he goes, comes back the other way. So this third boss coming up is unique to this game and is terrible. It's, it's completely luck. Yeah. So, There's so much randomness to this. Yeah. So you want this boss to, this boss has several patterns, one of which is a fist. You want it to pull out the fist because he stands there vulnerable for several seconds. But it's oh, not too big of a deal if he does anything else, as long as he does not go to the left side of the screen. If he does, that's very bad because you can't repeatedly take damage because your single ring always flies to the left. So time's coming up here. Soon. Uh. Oh. Okay, time. 
That went well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Angel Island won first try. That was 1842. Yeah, it was really close to PB. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good beast. run. I'm gonna show off the supersonic boss. Yeah, I could. Unless they need, Why not? they need us to switch already. This isn't part of the main run, but we just might as well do it because it looks cool. <laughs> so you unlock this boss by clearing the game with all four characters and clicking seven Chaos Emeralds. So the hitboxes in this boss are really obnoxious and weird. You need to very you have to hit his head. And put the arms blocking it have a hitbox that damage you. And there we go. <laughs> it's not pretty good. Yeah, it, it's simple. It's just the beginning can be annoying depending on what he does with his arms. There's an, there's an individual level strike to beat the boss in like 13 seconds. It's a little shoots that came out if he would have uh, dashed the right. right. <laughs> That was a weird sound for the yeah, score. Know. So, you want to show up your chow? <laughs> oh, you... <laughs> okay. Sonic and Amy, run. Shout outs to Sonic and Amy. That was the shop Sonic and Amy. <laughs> All right, coming up in just a few minutes, we will be playing Sonic Advance 3, so stay tuned. We have a $10 donation from Skelton.